the time, we get questions and comments about us living here in a yurt. And yes, we live here in a yurt, 700 square feet. And uh, we've lived here now for what? Eight years or something like that? It's going on eight, seven years. So five of us, the two of us, plus three kids, all in 700 square feet. Yep. And then some people are like, I really wish you would get a bigger space. But we don't have a problem living here, do we? No. No. In fact, families used to live in smaller houses, much, much smaller houses than they do today. Much smaller. In fact, it's really, really interesting that over the years, the family size has decreased, but the house sizes have increased. That doesn't make any sense. You would think if the families are smaller, the house sizes would get smaller too, but that's not the case. No. Families had much bigger members of their family back in the day. Like even when we were visiting Stark Brothers some time ago, they had the house on the property where the original owner lived with his kids and I think it was something like he had like 10, 15 kids, something he had like 17. Wow, 17 kids. Wow. 17 kids. That's pretty crazy. And the house was something like 500 square feet or something like that. It was less like than that. that. I, I, I'm probably thinking it was less than 400 so, square feet. That's really, really hard for me to imagine is ha really? having, what, another 12 people in here? Packing them in <laughs> tight. Packing them in. But that's just the way people used to live and actually the way we live now is really abnormal to other times in in history all other times in history yeah, pretty much pretty much we're just like this little blip unless in you the were of like a history. royal class or something oh, then right. if you're normal people you wouldn't have a big house but one of the challenges of living in a smaller space especially if you're homesteading like we are is as your homestead starts to grow and you have all these various things going on you, you do start running out of space of what to do. So I can see why in the past all these different homesteads and you look at some of the older homesteads, they had all these different buildings for different things that they had going on, whether it was for storing their feed or yeah. or food pantries or whatever. You'd have a spring house, you'd have a corn crib, you'd have a barn, you'd have a blacksmith shop, you'd have all these other outbuildings. So that has been one of our challenges here and we're trying to work on that. And one of the projects that I've been working on here recently has been a food pantry because we do have a kitchen here in our yurt as well as the bathroom with running water for those of you who are wondering. And we do have our own bedroom and the kids have beds as well. And uh, we do, as you can see, have a TV here too. So we're not living primitive here in the yurt, but uh, we do have modern conveniences here. When we first started out though, we told people we were gonna live in a yurt. They were like, are you gonna have running water? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have all the, you know, modern conveniences. We even have a dishwasher, which is fantastic. Yeah. But you know. But yeah. with being here on the homestead, having limited space here in the yurt and uh, growing all the different things that we're growing, we are have been at the point where it's like we don't have a lot of space to keep the food that we're growing so i was like we need to have a food pantry so that's what i've been working on here recently in the location that we're setting up our food pantry in we were previously using it for something else and it really just became a junk room so we cleared out all the junk then using repurposed wood i set up interior walls inside and since this is going to be a food pantry for shelving we use some old wired shelves that were pretty rusty they came out of some closed restaurants or something like that so we sanded those down and then painted them black and inside I decided I want an accent wall so for that wall I set up some drywall. Sometimes we have to go to the hardware store more than I would like to admit. And for this project, we did purchase a few pieces of lumber and we also purchased some for another project inside our yurt. And while we were there, I picked out some paint for my accent wall. And with recently seeing empty shelves at the grocery store, it's impressed on me even more that we need to store up food for our family. Yeah. And seeing that is also an eerie and sobering reminder 
of Joel chapter 1 verses 15 and 16 in the Bible where it talks about the food disappearing before the people's eyes as a curse coming on the people for their erred ways. So uh, just something that is, has been on my mind. So over the past few days we've been working on this pantry and I've been using a lot of repurposed recycled materials. I've put wood on the sides for the walls but this one wall I'm having as an accent wall and I was using drywall because I want it to be a little bit more colorful and pop. So after about three or four times of spreading the mud, letting it dry and sanding it off, finally got the wall where I wanted it to be. Then it was time to add some color. And I must admit, I'm not a drywall expert at all. The first time I did drywall was here inside our yurt. Actually, some of these walls that you see right behind us right there. And we were in a rush trying to get in here, to live in here and, and get our occupancy so, so we could live here. And it was not the great first experience for me so I'm just slapping the mud up as fast as I could and and really didn't do a good job of, of getting it done but it was like I, we need to move in here let's get it done and get it get in here well it wasn't even supposed to be your first time doing drywall no. our friend was supposed to help us and that's what he does for a living but he ended up getting really sick and then couldn't help us so we were kind of forced into it so well, the walls got up so they still need to, for me to go back and and work on them but this wall here in the pantry i was like i'm going to slow down i'm going to take my time and i'm going to put my heart into this and and just just do a good job on my own but i'm never alone on a road to wherever i want and you see i And I know not all of you like the green that I selected, but I do. And besides, it's gonna go really well with something that we're adding to the room that I'm really excited about. Well, after we put on the paint, I next put down these wood boards for a workable counter space. And you know what? Let's go out there and see what it looks like now. So I must admit, the exterior of our pantry looks like junk to be honest with you. But here really soon, I hope to put the siding, like the siding we have on our yurt here, the same kind of siding here on the pantry. But the main work that I've been doing is on the inside. Even though it's chilly outside, it feels pretty good in here. It does feel good. We have the space heater in here to keep it warm during this time of year. And during the summer and hotter times, we have an AC unit that we use to keep it cool in here. However, the AC unit's pretty dirty, so I'm gonna have to clean that up. As well as somebody recommended putting a frame or something around it just to make it look neater, because that's something I wanna do too. Make it just look a little bit better, especially after all the work that I've done in other areas in here. So uh, we'll just have to see. I I think I want to make a frame, but just make it where you can hang it on the wall with some decorative mesh over it. So you can't see it, but you can also take that off the wall and clean it. So um, I think that would look really nice in here. Yeah, that doesn't sound bad. Yeah, I can see that. 
And it's really nice coming in here, seeing you know the beets, the pickled beets that we grew the beets and we canned them, and the tomato sauce and our pumpkins that we grew, and just having a little extra. And one tip that you know that I do is when I go to the grocery store, I just buy a little bit extra. So you have, you just buy you know one bottle extra whenever of one thing, and then bring it and add it to your pantry. So you know we're stocked up on olive oil, and you know I have oatmeal and. So some other things and another thing that I really like to do is buy in bulk and I like buying from Azure and Azure it's an online shopping um, they have different mm -hmm. drop-offs uh, big trucks will come and drop off mm -hmm. and I really like that because you can get higher quality food mm -hmm. cheaper so if you're interested in that I'll leave a link in the comment section below but also Redmond, you know, we keep our salt on hand. We love Redmond Real Salt and all of their products that they have to offer. And over here, we have some really emergency food. So it's freeze dried food. It's a 30 day supply for Ready Hour. It's two buckets, so it doesn't take up a lot of space. And it's just so we can be prepared. And speaking of freeze dried, now we want to show you an item that we have in here that we're really, really excited about. Show them. La la la. Our Harvest Right Freeze Dryer. <laughs> and I'm really excited about our Harvest Right Freeze Dryer that we have. It's just another way for us to preserve what we're producing here on our homestead, even from what we grow in the garden to even meat because you can cook meat and freeze dry it and then just have it ready to use on a shelf and it'll be shelf stable and last even longer. And you won't have like all the heavy jars. You, it'll be lighter weight and it's just more things you can do. So that way we can better stock up our food pantry with items like these raspberries here that we got from somebody else that has a freeze dryer like this and was able to do that. So that's pretty neat. These raspberries look, look kind of yummy actually. So They're very <laughs> yummy. I've had them before. <laughs> so this is just provides us with the capability of making shelf stable items for our family so that way we can stock up our food pantry. So as the grocery store shelves may decrease in what they have available, hopefully we're gonna increase in the items that we have on our food pantry. And we hope that you do the same in whatever way you do it. And if for, for those of you who are interested in getting your own freeze dryer, like the Harvest right here, check out the link in the show notes below and you can get your very own as well. So just make sure you stay tuned because we plan to put this bad boy to use. So check out this wall here. Like, can you tell where the seam is, the joint is. Come on, try to find it. Can you find it? <laughs> Can you find it? <laughs> Maybe. Show me. It's right over there. Where at over there? <laughs> not it. <laughs> That's a hole. It's not it. Actually, the wall comes together a lot lower right down. Uh, right down here so yep not there so I think it's not bad for my second time ever I think it's really good drywall because I don't like inside at all our house inside it's awful and I helped do Ooh, it so. awful man that means I need to do something about that pretty soon I didn't I know <laughs> said. Punch in the gut. what did I just say I Ouch. said I did part of that too <laughs> it is a little bad but and here's a lot better, at least I think. I but I hate sheetrock, that's mine. I hate it, I don't like it, I don't want it. But this is his project, so if he wanted sheetrock on the wall, that's up to him. Just that one spot. We got the rough looking wood on the side just to kind of go with the rustic look. Well, that's it for our pantry for now. Just wanna love you, just wanna hold you, just wanna be with you till we grow old. Please tell me you'll stay or take me away. I want you for myself every single day You set my world on fire You set my world on fire I don't know what I'd do without you You make me smile, what is it that you do? Great 
till you added colors Like the moon is the snow, we don't care about the others You said